Hey everyone, Steve the Salty Ham. Thanks for uh, joining me again today. So if you saw the last video, um, I took a Baofeng repeater box that I built and put a 40 watt uh, B-Tech amplifier on it and uh, gave my 5 watt carry around camping repeater uh, 30 to 40 watts of power. So it's going to be pretty good once I can get that out into the field. Uh, and make everything solar on that but I did tell you that I wanted to show you the uh, the repeater build so let's go and check that out all right so here it is this is my Baofeng repeater box that I put together I got the box on wish.com for about $15 uh, having a sale or something I don't remember they're always having a sale but uh waterproof and maybe cheap but it keeps the water out and uh keeps everything inside i like it not bad for being cheap um i have a baofeng rubber duck antenna as my receive antenna at the moment and it works just fine that's all i need it to do is receive it doesn't have to do anything special uh the coax jumpers have bnc connectors on the ends here so, what I did is I went and bought the uh, the BNC to SMA uh, connectors to be able to go on to this. And I'll go right in here. And it's in. Same thing happens over on the uh, transmit side. The transmit antenna is a 15 and, I believe, 15 and a half inch um, dual band antenna it's a Nagoya knockoff this is the Lueton NA771 I will put a link in the description below um, this is a great antenna uh, the only reason I have it on there is because it's so good um, and I have a few of them as uh, there's one there on my girlfriend's uh, HT and I have a couple more floating around probably in one of the cabinets but Anyway, so that's also has the BNC connector that like you saw over on the bottom of this one that connects to the BNC and goes to the jumper cable inside to the radios. So you've seen the outside there. Let's go take a look at the inside of this. There's the inside. I've got two Baofeng UV5R radios inside. Turn this brightness up a little bit here. All right, now there's so much better. So this is the receive side and or the transmit side and the receive side. Um, I have the extended battery on uh, the receive side just so it can receive for a couple of days and not have to worry about being charged. Uh, normally, at the end of each day that I do use this, I do end up charging both batteries uh, anyway, so. I think I might have went a little overkill with the extended batteries, but they work great uh, just in case I don't, I, you know, I don't, I'm not able to go back and pick up the batteries or switch them out or something, you know, at the end of each day if I'm out camping. At the moment, I have a Baofeng battery eliminator plugged into the Radio Shack power supply. The battery eliminator is great. Uh, you can use that in your car goes in it's, it looks just like a regular standard baofeng battery uh with a cord in it instead of uh using like double a's or the uh, regular regular baofeng battery so on the tops of these radios the same bnc to sma connectors um that i have on the antennas are the same ones that are on these tops of these radios. That one just screws right into the top there and goes into the uh, very nice coax that I picked up. Let's see, I think ADR Industries. This is uh, $30 a piece for each of these coax cables. 
I wanted something with uh, very low loss on it and uh, very well made. So uh, they're the RG8X, uh, I've been working great and uh, I'm really happy with those. Uh, this right here is the heart of it that kind of makes everything pump correctly between the radios. Um, what this does is it lets my receive radio, uh, receive signal, sends it through and then what this does is it goes and talks to this radio and this radio will retransmit that out on the other uh, antenna. So there's no need for a duplexer because it kind of duplexes on its, I don't, well, I don't even know if you would call it duplexing. You're just kind of receiving on one and sending on another. Cross banding almost. It's like cross banding, but not cross band. Uh, same band, but uh, lets it talk to this radio, and this radio then transmits it out through the uh, transmit antenna. This was about $15, so I will uh, put a link to in the description to find this on Amazon that's where I found this and uh, it's been great I, I like it it was a it's been a fun project it was fun to uh, fun to put together and is working great uh, man I love it I love it I love it all right so let me hook this antenna back up here all right so at the moment I do have them powered on you can see the arrow on the side. This is my receive frequency. And this side is the, uh, the top bar is the transmit frequency. So what I did uh, to make this run correctly, to receive, I put a CT. If I go into menu, 11 is the uh, menu 11. You go to receive, CTCS, I put a hundred turn uh, tone on it, turn <laughs> hundred hertz tone. Um, go back in there, you go up to 13, and you leave the transmit off. You go if you go to menu 25, which is the uh, shift direction, you leave that off, and uh, the offset doesn't really matter because you're not using that as um, like you're using a regular repeater. So it's basically just a single frequency with a CTCS tone. So on your transmit side, it's a little bit different. So if I go into the menu here, go to menu item 11, I don't have a receive tone on there because the radios are able to talk between each other without having a CTCS tone but I do have a transmit tone of 100 so that's how um, you would be able to hear it is on your receive uh, you have the 100 Hertz tone uh, from there you can check 25 you don't need a shift direction and you don't have to have the offset it only activates when you have your shift direction on. If you have watched my manual use of the UV5R, those menus, I go over um, menu item 11, 13, 25. Oops, hold on a sec here. 2, 5, <laughs> and then uh, 26. Those are your four main ones to manually put in uh, a frequency for a repeater but you don't need all of that right now you just need the simplex frequency with a CTCS tone uh, transmit tone and Vox Vox needs to be on the voice activation because what this does is this takes the sound puts it through and this is gonna hear what's coming through there just like it was a, a push to talk mic in your hand so it's going to hear that sound that's coming out of there and it's going to activate the Vox on there and that's how that transmits. So I've got those turned on. 
and I have the repeater frequency set into my girlfriend's radio there and my radio here so let me turn mine on One forty six point six five five is the frequency. So I will show you how this is. That's kind of cool. So you can't really hear that it's it's doing that. But if I set this right here, turn this up, and I take this radio she likes to have her roger beep on and i like having roger beep on but i don't always have it on so if i go and i use hers to transmit through the repeater and it's pretty cool so you can tell that it's going through the repeater and into the radio you can see what's happening. Let me move this over here. Now you can get a better look. You'll notice on here when it's receiving, the light will turn green. On here, this light will turn red because that's transmitting. And then this one will turn green for receiving. There you go. All in all, it was a fun project. Uh, very, very, very cheap. Um, and if you add on the uh, amplifier like I did, um, you can, it's basically uh, uh, getting a portable repeater at 30 to 40 watts. And that's awesome. Awesome, awesome. Uh, cheaper than uh, going and buying a tailor-made one like uh, the ones that I've seen. I know Midland just came out with one uh, two days ago, something like that. And that's only a 10-watt repeater. Redivis has one, and that's a 10-watt repeater. As this sits without the amplifier, 5-watt repeater. Still works great out in, out in outdoors, and uh, I love it. Um... But I like to have the extra power. If I'm going to put it up high and I'm going to have a strong signal coming out, I want people to be able to uh, pick up that good strong signal. I believe this, just the repeater build itself, uh, parts and just the little knickknacks. And it would have been cheaper if I had gotten uh, a different jumper cables. Uh, jumper coax to go f to the antennas but like i said you know that i just i wanted something with very low loss because you're already doing five watts coming out of these radios but you can also you can go on amazon you can get the eight dollar jumper coax and uh and use those all together this one's the way it sits um was about a hundred 55 to 160 dollars and that's with shipping and stuff on most of the stuff because uh most of it i did get from uh, amazon or wish and if you order enough of a couple of things on wish uh, you get free shipping so that uh was kind of cool but uh 160 dollar repeater that you can take outdoors uh i think this uh is definitely something that you know is good good you can do uh you can do it with the uh any any style you can do it with gmrs i have a gmrs license also and i also have a couple of gmrs hts looks just like these but they are the gmrs versions and i have two of those and a couple of other gmrs hts that I use um, I can make a GMRS repeater so it's the same thing uh, for GMRS or ham um, works just the same and I hope you guys like that
All right, so all in all, um, the repeater build was uh, was pretty cool. I'm really happy that I've got it, and uh, I use it as much as I can. Um, I will, like I said, put a link to the uh, transmitting antenna and the little bell thing repeater box uh, in the description, so that way you are able to go on and check those out. I want to say thanks for checking out the video. Comment. Uh, if you have any comments, like, subscribe, share. Um, try to build this. Let's try and build this channel up. I need all the help I can get. But uh, thanks for checking out the video. 7-3. You guys have a great uh, rest of your day. And I'll see you on the next one.